Hello, I'm Thematica, and in today's video, I will be evaluating the cubed root of i. They're multiple valued. So, let's figure out all of the solutions. First, using the horrible way you should never do, and then second, using the way you should always do. So let's set this equal to some generic complex number a plus bi. Then, cube both sides. And I get i on this side, because the cubed root and the cubed cancel each other out. Then I get i equals, using binomial coefficient theorem, a cubed plus three. Let's simplify this. I get a cubed plus 3a squared bi, and then minus 3ab squared, because i squared is negative 1, and then minus b cubed i, because i cubed is minus i. <laughs> now let's separate this into its real and imaginary parts, so it's going to be a cubed minus 3ab squared, and then plus 3a squared b minus b cubed times i. Now, what is this equal to? i, or 0 plus 1 i. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set these two equal. I'm going to set these two equal. Let's focus on this one first. So I get a cubed minus 3ab squared equals 0. Now I could add that to both sides. a cubed equals 3ab squared. Now if a is not equal to 0, I could just divide both sides by a. So I get 3a squared equals 3b squared. And now I'll focus on this equation, which is 3a squared b minus b cubed equals 1. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to plug in for a squared right there. So I get 3 times 3b squared times b minus b cubed equals 1. And then I get 9b cubed minus b cubed equals 1. And putting that through, I get 8b cubed equals 1. Now, just to make sure we get all solutions, I'm going to factor this out using difference of cubes. And what you get is 2b, because 2b cubed is 8b cubed, minus 1, times, uh, then you get 4b squared, again, squaring it, plus, and then I get 2b, because that's going to be 1 times 2b, and then plus 1. It's going to be equal to 0. Now, if you look at the discriminant of this, if I look at b squared minus 4a, uh, a, c, you can obviously tell that's going to be negative. So we can just ignore that, okay? So we're not going to get real solutions from that. And we get this, or b equals 1 half. Now, what are the values for a, then? Well, looking at this equation, I get a squared equals 3, what's b? 1 half squared, meaning a squared equals 3 quarter. Now, take plus or minus square root of both sides, and I get a equals plus or minus the square root of 3 over 2. Now, there's another solution. It's when a is equal to 0. Okay, let's write down this first solution, though. Our first two solutions, actually. It's going to be a, which is square root of 3 over 2, and then b, which is 1 half i. Or it could also be negative square root of 3 over 2, plus 1 half i. Now, we're going to have a third solution, which I'll get by setting a equals 0 there. a equals 0. And you can see it's obviously going to be a solution. The equation we had before was a 3a squared b to the minus b cubed equals 1. What's a equal to? 0. So get rid of that. And then I get negative b cubed equals 1, b cubed equals negative 1. Now we're only looking at real solutions of this. Uh, I get b cubed plus 1 equals 0. So remember we're only looking at real solutions of this. So, using the sum of cubes, I get b plus 1, and then times b squared minus b plus 1 equals 0. This right here has discriminant negative 3, because 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times 1, you get negative 3. So, we can ignore that, 
and get b plus 1 equals 0 and thus b equals negative 1. So we have one more solution and it's going to be when a is 0, b is negative 1, so that's just negative i. These are the solutions to the cubed root of i. I could have done this much, much more easily. So what I could have done instead is said that z cubed equals i, and I know that i is going to be equal to e to the pi over 2 plus 2 pi n times i because complex value right there, angle is pi over 2, so that angle is pi over 2. But if I go another 2 pi around, I get back to this pi over 2 angle. Except now it's in a different form, but I could go around one more time and get another i. I go around, go around, go around, and I get a bunch of different ways to represent this. Now, let's bring both sides to the one third power, okay? One third power, one third power. And what do I get out of this? Well, multiply it through, you get e to the pi over 6 plus. 2 pi over 3 times n quantity times i. Now, we need this. We want unique values for this, okay? So we're going to restrict it for n equals 0, 1, 2. Okay? Those are going to be the only values for n where this is a unique solution. So let's write these out. I get e to the pi over 6i. Then I also get e, well I get, let's rewrite this as 4 pi over 6. So that n is going to be 1, so that's going to be get, give us 5 pi over 6i. Then the next one is going to give us e to the, that's going to be 2, so that's going to be 8 pi over 6. Add it there, I get 9 pi over 6, or 3 pi over 2i. Now, if you plug these in, I get cosine of pi over 6 plus i sine of pi over 6. If you haven't already noticed, I get square root of 3 over 2 plus 1 half i, then negative square root of 3 over 2 plus 1 half i. That goes to 0, and then I just get negative i. Now, if you don't think that was easier, you're, you're a devil worshiper.